Hello, everybody. Y'all, come on in. The floor is here. It is time for Calabama Live. It is Thanksgiving time. So excited to be with you all tonight. Let me see. Let me make sure I'm doing everything right. Okay. I do believe I am. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so happy to be with you tonight. If you're catching this on the rebroadcast or watching it again later, welcome, welcome, welcome. Join us Monday nights at 7, right here, 7 Central, right here um, with Chef Lori and Calabama Live. What y'all been up to today? Can you grab me my whisk from the bear, the, the wire whisk? Y'all, I realized I got everything together and I forgot my wire whisk. You know, sometimes you be doing so much, you just you do so much, you can't do no more. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness, family! It is about that time. It is almost Thanksgiving time. I'm so excited. And okay, you guys, now full transparency. All right. So I am. Okay, wait a minute. It's just saying Facebook user. It's not showing me the name. Well, that's not cool, huh? I wonder if I need to like change screens and log not logged in or something. Let me make sure we're on this video. Hold on. This stuff. Do you know me and this equipment? <laughs> Hello, Christian. How is Auntie's baby doing? <laughs> Y'all know I just love being your auntie, right? Y'all know I do. <laughs> okay. I'm checking YouTube for you know saying You know my big fella. Y'all know. That. My baby, that's my baby. Y'all know. <laughs> Okay, cool stuff cooking. Hello, ready to see us cooking. All right. Y'all get me excited. Get me going. So tonight we are making mashed potatoes and lump free gravy. Yeah, I said lump free gravy because you know what? No judgment here. This is your lump friends here and family. And if your if your gravy comes out a little lumpy, that's okay. Today we're gonna fix that. It's gonna stop today. Let's see what else we got. You like lump potatoes? So now you see, here's the thing. I don't like my potatoes. I like mine kind of lumpy too. I don't like it when my potatoes are, they can be smooth like a puree, but I want that at a restaurant. That makes me feel fancy. When I'm cooking at home, I want to know that you actually peeled them potatoes. And the only way I really know that you peel those potatoes is if they have a lump in them. You guys, hold on. I got it, don't I? I forgot my mic. Y'all just keep talking while I get it done. It's right here. It's right here. I was sitting here and all of a sudden, Ooh, I, I'm annoying. And I know y'all are it because y'all love me. And y'all y'all never leave me out. Do you know what I'm saying? The USB C has a storm in there. Listen. <laughs> y'all, just to be rushing around. Can I tell y'all what's going on though? Because y'all are gonna are really gonna be excited when I tell you because you all know you all know the whole story, right? So I, I'm here in Dallas and hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, receiver plugged in. One second. I'm here in Dallas and tomorrow I am recording my first television segment here. <laughs> I'm so excited, family, because it's been a while since I did my goodbye to the area. All right, is that better? Is that better, y'all? Is that better, y'all? Y'all tell me now. Tell me a sound is better. So I want to make sure that I that I get it right. Is that better? What? It's not that stuff. <laughs> okay. Ah. All right. Now, <laughs> got my ball myself. Sorry, I forgot that, y'all. Oh, so much going on today. So anyhow, yes, tomorrow I am. My first uh, segment here in the Dallas area. So I've been prepping and getting ready for that. And it's, it's, not, it's not live. It's not being live. No, I think it's been recorded. And so um, I will definitely tell you guys about it when it's coming on so that you can see it because I want y'all to see it. You know, I love me some TV. I love doing TV in the camera. It's just so much fun. It just feels at home. But you know, the only thing I think I like. Maybe a little bit more is uh, uh, <laughs> this is so funny to me. Okay, yes, now someone put down. I'm going to say someone. WFNA TV, which is channel eight here in 
be honest. So that's going to be um, showing airing in about a week or so. But I've got my first segments there. So, y'all, I'm getting back in the game. I know you all have been, have been following me for a while. Y'all been writing like, oh, when you get back to TV? Like, Give me a minute. Let me let me get my parents together. I just moved. I moved states and everything. <laughs> Can y'all do me a favor? Share this video. All right. Hit the share button. It's free. I called the people on Facebook. And I was like, oh, hey, Facebook, you know, what's going on? What's going on? I mean, Meta, what's going on? You know, they were good stuff. And I said, hey, I'm going, I've been going live with you, you know, on Monday nights. But I just want you all to let me know, is the, the share button still free or are y'all charging a fee? You know, because Facebook be tripping sometimes, you know? And he said, he, what he had told me, he said, yes, it's still free. They can still share your videos for free. And I just was so thankful. And excited, and I can wait to tell y'all that you can share the video for free. Okay, so share video, share, 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 share. Okay, and tell me where you are. Okay, I'm seeing YouTube is saying your sound is boring. Okay, I'm gonna get someone um, on our team to check over there on YouTube. Thank you so much. I uh, sorry, I can't see your name. Okay, share. Thank you, Erica. You know, tell me where you are because you know now I'm in a new state. Um, I don't know if, I mean, if my followers have always been young, have always been all over, but I'm curious to see now where you guys are now that I'm coming on it. Yeah, um, in Dallas, if I'm building relationships here, so let me know where you are, city to city. You know, I appreciate it. I can't wait. Okay, so we're going to talk mashed potatoes and gravy tonight, and we're going to talk sweet potatoes too. Well, actually, it's a candy cane, so. so what I've been doing here, we have having our little opening chat, my opening monologue. Is uh, yeah. <laughs> peeling potatoes. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how I like to make mashed potatoes. Somebody said already that they like the potatoes a little lumpy. And can I be honest with you guys? I'm kind of in that same camp. Okay. I like to have a little. I like a little little on my potatoes. I want to know that you cut them up. You know what I'm saying? So what I've done though is I have peeled my potatoes. Okay, and I'm using Yukon Gold. And you're wondering why am I using Yukon Gold? I'm gonna give them a quick rinse. Okay. Why am I using Yukon Gold? I'm using Yukon Gold because Yukon Gold potatoes actually um, are a little bit softer to me, and they're little, they have they're a little buttery in their taste, and I just like the way they mash up better. They're they're just a kinder kinder gentler potato. <laughs> no, I actually like the flavor, and they are softer. When you cook them up, they're a little more buttery. And I just really like the way they cook up. Now, a recipe works every day of the week. Every single day, and every every day and twice on Sundays, a recipe potato works. So don't say, you said not to eat the recipe. I have said no such thing, okay? I would never say that. Because if I said that, my mama would look at me. My mama matches a recipe. She believes in matching that recipe. Now that you can match a recipe. I, however, like to match both. Okay. Now, red potatoes are also good really matched, y'all. Another good option. You can do something different. If you want to mash a red potato, a little different flavor. It's nice. Little red potatoes are a little bit sweeter. A little sweet, I think. Okay, someone else says they like smooth potatoes unless it's in soup. I'm going to show you how to go either way so you can understand what you want to do. All right, so now I'm not cooking this whole bag. I got a five pound bag of gold. I'm not cooking all five pounds because it's not Thanksgiving yet. I need to save some of my carb count <laughs> for next week. All right, first thing we're going to do is start cutting this up. Now, Whatever size the potatoes are when you buy them, you want to cut them up to boil them. So I start by cutting it in half, roughly. See there, cut it in half. And then I'm going to go in half again. And then like this. Okay. And I like to cut mine about like this. Can you see that? Let me get closer. About like that. Maybe a little smaller sometimes. And the reason is I don't want the cook time. I don't want, I don't want to be here all day long with the potatoes. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to be here. The, the bigger they are, the longer they take. And I'm putting them straight into the pot. And we're going to fill them with water and let them start cooking while we talk about gravy. So dice them up. You can always dice them really small. I mean, they're still going to take a minute or so. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to really not gonna get rid of that piece of the puzzle. But you can get a little bit more time on it to cook them. Cut them smaller. And also, if you cut them smaller, when you mash them, they'll probably mash a little bit finer. Leave them kind of chunky. You know, mash up a little. Bit. That's again personal. So let me take a poll, guys, because I've seen already one 
person says already, they like oh, potatoes, kind of like me, and I see another one already saying they like smooth potatoes. So tell me in the comments, both on YouTube and in Facebook, you really can watch this on the replay. What do you prefer? Lumpy, sort of lumpy, <laughs> or if you like them smooth? Hey, Sarah. Yeah, and when I say lumpy, I'm not talking about potato salad potatoes now. Now, don't get carried away. We're not talking about having no potatoes, okay? Because that's a that's a different dish, okay? That's a different dish. <laughs> I'm just saying. But y'all tell me, what do you like, lumpy or smooth? Ah, I see some smooth. I see Shafina likes some lumpy. I just, it's you know, it's, I'm telling you, I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm like lumpy, but I haven't felt like mashing them all the way. <laughs> I'm just being telling the truth. Tell the truth and sharing the devil. Sometimes it's just, I don't feel like, but I have just honestly found that when they're just a little lumpy, for me, ooh, that flavor, potato flavor be busting through. I said busting. When you make a good potato, okay, that's speaking of which. Miss John, Miss Rose, you like the food? Rose? Okay. Somebody said, I got the top right in front of the camera. I do. You can't see. Oh, Lord. Thank you, baby. See, this is why we are all family. Thank you, baby. Thank you. I, and you know what I like most about y'all? I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to get back to the kids. I'm going to tell you what I like. I like the fact that when y'all say something, it's like, you know, it's like, I missed something. I think last week I missed something. Or, oh, we were making uh, macaroni, and I had cooked the noodles a long time. So I told y'all, like, oh, I love my noodles. But I think I didn't say it. I did it. And this little sweet child said, baby, I think you overcooked your noodles. And I said, oh, yeah, I did, because that's how I like them. What I appreciate about our family here is that you guys are so kind in how we treat each other. That it means so much to me to have a kind community. You know what I'm saying? This Alabama community is kind. Somebody says, what causes love? Well, you just don't mash it up enough. It's actually pretty simple. You can get a real blunt by mashing it in here. If you use a potato ricer, it's um, you can do a masher up and down, right? A ricer, you put in the potato and you like uh crank wheel turn it through. That gets them smoother as well. I see we get the smoother potatoes also. Um, also, another thing you can do, what I like to do sometimes, is whip them with your KitchenAid mixer or any mixer when you're done, and that'll pretty much get the little stuff. Usually it's just about how much you, how, how, how much you mash them is really going to determine what happens. All right? So now I'm going to put water in these potatoes. See how I've got these cut up here? Can you see it? I need to go to the other view. Hold on, y'all. I know we got options in here with views, right? Hold on. Here we go. Let me add this one. I'm going to show y'all. See this? This is how I like to get my... Well, why am I no good at this? I guess I need to start practicing this week for next week. This is how I like to get my potatoes. Nice views, okay? They're not so small that you, they don't... That they're going to faint or fall away or, you know anything, but they're also not so big that they're going to end up having a um, taking forever to cook. So we're going to cover these with water. You want to cover them just to, so they're just covered with water. Now you can, some people soak them to get extra starch off of them, okay? And that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think that's more of an issue for me personally. That's an issue more when I'm cooking justice as opposed to you cause. But that's just me. Okay, so we're going to come over here. I'm going to add a big chunk of salt. Salt is so important, y'all, in potatoes. Don't be like, oh, just a smidge of salt. Anybody say the word smidge and potato in the same sentence, don't eat it. Okay, so I'm going to start with a whole tablespoon. So the tablespoon, the salt is also going to help your water boil a little faster. But what that salt is also going to do is flavor your water and flavor and your potatoes flavor. So I'm going to put these on another burner here. I'm going to put them on high. And I'm going to let them do their thing. Now, what I have done in the past, I have, hold on, I'm to so we can talk here. Uh, let me this what I have done before, sometimes when I do mashed potatoes, I like to actually cook them in the cream. So instead of putting water in there, I'll actually put heavy cream in there or milk or half and half. That works too. Here's the thing though. Uh, here's, here's the other thing you want to remember though with that. 
if you do that, keep an eye on it because that's all. I mean, it's, y'all, my mind, okay, come on. Bring it in. Y'all praying for me? Y'all not praying for me, are you? Are y'all praying? Reach your hand forth and pray. Reach your hand out and pray. No, I need prayer. This is prayer. This is not no stage show. Like, I'm, and that's what's like, and then, oh, no, this is real. This is how you really get in your kitchen, how you really cook the food, and how it really comes out. Because anybody can be fancy fancy, but I want y'all to know how to cook for real. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to get it. Thank you, Christian. Stretch his hand out and pray for me. Bless you, baby. Okay, so when you cook the potatoes, if you put milk or cream in there while it's in the pot boiling, it, it'll still come out fine, but you got to watch it because that cream will bubble up and do all kinds of things, okay? And it'll fall, cook over and blah, blah, all this kind of stuff happens, and it's just unnecessary. It's just really, really unnecessary. And it's all avoidable if you just um, just do just do water. Or you can add a little bit of milk, just to watch it. And it's not a problem. I mean, I, I've done it, and I really like it. I have a thing with cream. Okay, and I told y'all before when it comes to um, the holidays around here, we don't play that, you know, let's go light. Yeah, oh no, we don't do that. We don't, mm, we don't play that. All right, now, while those are boiling, first we're going to talk about these sweet potatoes, candy yams, and then we're going to talk about gravy. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, it's potato night. I love a potato. I, I can't be the only person who just, just on its own, I just love potatoes. I don't understand why, because they don't taste like nothing. Um, but to me, they taste wonderful. Isn't that weird? I mean, my husband told me that I didn't realize one time that I just love potatoes until something he was getting me like probably some french fries or something. And they're like, you want ketchup? And I was like, mm-hmm. And he finally said, you know that you just like potatoes. And I said, I do. <laughs> and I realized he was correct. I just like potatoes. Anyway, so it's potato night. All right, now we're going to talk candy DMs or sweet potatoes. Ah, this is a sweet potato. This is your friend, okay? These are your buddies, all right? So, and you're not, as somebody said about the lump-free drink, hand mixer for mashed potatoes, dry stand and work. Okay, you old-fashioned. Oh, yeah, you got it. We're going to get there, y'all. Okay. All right, sweet potato. Now, when you go to the store, they have the sweet potatoes, and they sometimes have what they call jewel yams. Okay, and sometimes we'll say yam potatoes. I guess technically it's interchangeable. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. But I know this much. If you're not sure, pinch it. Okay, when you get an instant garlic peel, but pinch it in the store. And if you pinch it just a little bit and under the skin you see a little purple, it's going to be one of those dark rim yams. That's what I call them, dark rim yams. Okay, if you pinch it and it's got just this little nice flesh color, you got the kind of yam you want. Okay, my grandma taught me that. I never understood how come some people's hands would be dark and look a little funny, and sometimes they'd be just pretty. And she said, Baby, you got to pinch it and see, make sure it's what you want. Okay, and don't worry, you're gonna peel it so your fingernail ain't gonna get on. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Some of you got nails for so long, I don't know how you do it anyway. I guess you don't even have to pinch it, you just, just do that. It just, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, peel the potatoes. Now, these are nice little potatoes. I like cooking with smaller potatoes. If you want the big old candy ham, this one right here. You can get that. It's just going to change your cook time. I like to get it done, so I like to get them smaller. They're easier to cut, and they're easier to put with a knife. And I'm going to show y'all. No, this isn't my good knife. My good knife is somewhere else, but I'm just going to use this one. When you cut your yams for your sweet potatoes, do not cut them really thick, okay? Now, if you, if you just love them really thick and you want to cut them really thick, under, that's fine. It's just going to take some time for them to get done. Okay. On the same token, don't cut them super thin or they'll just basically disintegrate in there and you'll have just, you know what I'm saying? Nothing to it. Okay. And if that's what you want though, do you. But I'm just saying this is how I like it. Most of us like the yam that we can kind of, you know, like. Right. Now, some people say that you're supposed to cook candy yams on the, on the, the stove top. And I've seen some videos, they're like, oh, that's not how you do it if it's not on the stove top. And I'm like, listen, bro. everybody grandmama did it a little bit different, but it all came out the same. And all of us got these same hips. You know what I'm saying? We all gained the same way. If you like to cook yours on the stove top, go ahead. Okay? I like to cook mine in the oven. Ain't nothing wrong with me. We, you do you, I do me. Okay? So, I'm going to show you how I cook them in the oven, because I like that. Now, when I cut them up, See, I'm not using my good knife. It might take a little work. 
but see how you just cut here? You want to cut about a quarter, well, about a half inch, quarter to a half inch, okay? Now I'm going to get an overhead shot so I can show you guys. Let me go to the overhead shot so I can show you exactly how this works. Okay. Okay, y'all, you know it. Here we go. See that? Okay, well, not that. But you see this? This is, oh, look. This is what you want, okay? This is a nice thickness. They will cook well. They'll cook all the way through. And they also won't be so mushy on you, okay? All right. Hold on. CJ said you're going to try sweet potato pie for the first cut. Okay, CJ, we did sweet potato pie. Did we do sweet potato pie, y'all? Yeah, the first time back. Go back about three weeks now. Sweet potato pie did one. And also, you guys, hang on a few days. I got a big announcement coming for you that involves sweet potato pie. You're going to see, Jay, you're going to be like, girl, how did you know? And I'll be like, the Lord told me, you know? So, okay, potatoes. That's how you're going to slice them, all right? Now, when you get these smaller potatoes, it will take more of them than larger potatoes. That's the only thing to remember. Some people also like to thoroughly cook their sweet potatoes or at least parboil them, start cooking them a little bit and get them a little bit soft before they make That's fine. I made mine this way and I'm going to show you how I get them done. So I just want you guys to see, use the small sweet potato is nice. The small ones are also nice when you're doing sweet potato pies because I always believe in roasting the sweet potatoes first. And when you roast them at this size, it's a lot easier to get them done than them big. Them big jokers are really fun to look at. But I'm just telling y'all, you will be sitting there for a minute waiting on that thing to get done. All right. Now, here I have already cut up some sweet potatoes. Got them all nice and ready. Are y'all sharing this video? <laughs> now we're going to make the candy portion. Now, what I like is to use brown sugar. My mother makes what I consider to be the best yams in the world. She does a mixture of white sugar and brown sugar, and it tastes phenomenal. I love it. But I like to just do mine with brown sugar because I like the thickness and the molasses from the brown sugar, okay? So what we're going to do is season it with some cinnamon and nutmeg. Don't skip this step. Don't skip this step. And listen, I, okay, There, these are two different things. Cinnamon, nutmeg. Cinnamon, nutmeg. They are not the same thing. If they were the same thing, they'd be all the same thing. It would be cinnamon and cinnamon, or nutmeg and nutmeg. But it's not. It's cinnamon and nutmeg because they are different. Use both. They are different. Now, how much should I put in here? This is all up there. How much should you put in there? Enough. When you are cooking this kind of food, the first thing that you I'm gonna tell you right now, if you if you stop asking, how much how much how much how much how much you you won't miss the whole thing, okay? That ain't, that's not the essence of it. This is, mm, oh yeah, that look that looked about like I wanted to look. See, and then you take the other one because you use both, but they're not the same. And you go like this right here, okay? Now let's talk fresh grated nutmeg. Fresh grated nutmeg better, absolutely. But in all honesty, are you working to stand up here and fresh bread some nutmeg for some candy yams? Exactly. So it's your jar, baby. Don't let, I'm having to say this because these people are all over the internet talking about you have, should grate. It's only good if you grate it. Listen, we are some normal people living some normal lives. First of all, anybody got time to be buying whole nutmegs all the time? When I need some nutmeg, I need to spice some nutmeg. Now, I agree, though, it is nice to have a really a nice, you know, fresh sprig of and That's really good. It's really good on cocoa. And they can even go in some recipes. I'm not saying it's not good, and I'm not discouraging you. If you are a nutmeg shaker or whatever, grater, I think that's awesome because it's good. The flavor is, you can totally tell the difference. But out here in a little bit more of the everyday real world, we buy sentiment and nutmeg because they're different. I'm going to put a little bit more in here because I feel like I need some more color. You can use the white sugar and brown sugar mix. I said my mama does it like that. The biggest thing I've noticed is that white sugar is better for sweetening. Brown sugar is better for syrupy 
um, the syrupy kind of texture. I love that. Somebody also adds chives to their potatoes. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. All right. Now, this is really simple. I'm going to get my gloves on because I'm doing a lot of cooking. Ooh, these potatoes still get talking about. Ooh, I almost burned my hand. That pot always gets me because I forget that the handles on it are hot. All right. We're going to take this. This is just a layering project, okay? You're going to start. Uh, let me go overhead. Let me change angle. Let's go overhead so you can see me. I real, just realized what I was doing. Okay. Let me this in here. I'm going to put this here. How about that? How about that, family? I got y'all covered. I'm so excited. I just love, you know, this is like one of my favorite days of the week. When we get together and cook live. All right, here we go. Oh, let me get my other glove on. I ain't going to put on one glove and not the other. You got two hands, you need two gloves. Sometimes I just don't make sense to myself. But that's how I know it's me. Because if I make sense, it's going to be me. All right, here we go. I'm gonna just layer these. You don't have to be fancy and perfect with this. This is just how my, my mother lays hers out. I love watching her make candy ham. She lays them out. She cuts them all the exact same slice by hand, and she lays the perfect first layer every time. I'm like, how did she do that? I figure by the time I get her age, I'll be able to do it too. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep doing these little kind of layers like I do. All right. Now I'm gonna take some of this cinnamon nutmeg brown sugar, and sprinkle it all over, okay? Now, be generous because it's supposed to be sweet. And if you say, well, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie is different. That's going to have milk in it and eggs and all kinds of other things. It's going to have that. It's got sugar in the potatoes, okay? So use the sugar in the potatoes. And all you're going to do literally is just stack it up. It's an assembly product. It's like arts and crafts in the kitchen. Hey, there you go. I love this. And I'm doing a small dish. Because if I cook too big a dish of this Thanksgiving stuff now, my family's going to be sick of Thanksgiving before it even gets here. And y'all not going to mess up my Thanksgiving. This is my first Thanksgiving in Texas, too. Shoot. Woo. Girl, you tell her. All right, see, I'm using about a cup of sugar. I may not use that much, but whatever. Do you? Some people don't like it as sweet. That's fine. I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm not going to talk about you. And if anybody else tries to talk about you, I'm going to tell them to shut up behind their business. Because that's your house and your folks. But I'm telling you, come over here, it's going to be sweet. Right, that's just all there is to it. Now, I'm going to tell you a good tip. For Thanksgiving, what I do, and this, I'm telling you, this is the bomb right here. I do all of this on Wednesday, right? Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, the night before. Cover it in foil and sit it in your fridge. Let me tell you what's going to happen. That sugar is going to melt with this little bit of juice that or, or the steam or the, the natural juiciness that come in there whatever I don't know what you call it. it's gonna it's just gonna uh, dissolve that's a that's a big word it's gonna dissolve and when you go to cook these babies honey listen listen with two s's not listen listen and two s's dad you're gonna be good Okay, now see here, this is all I'm doing. Just sugar. And you can even see, I don't know if you can see the camera, if you pick up enough detail for you to see it, but you can even see the nutmeg and the cinnamon. You can see them separately because they're two different things. You just had that description. Now don't feel them too high. I know it's tempting. I want you to well, but don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Now that we've got that in your gut, that looks sugar. Just one more. Because it's the holidays. Okay. You put enough on there so your heart's flat. Now, if you have somebody like you who's a diabetic or whatever, you need to warn them that this dish could cause major problems. Okay. Um, now, I use a little bit of water. This is why the people who do the stovetop only thing sometimes they tend to be against using the water because they think you're making sugar water. No, I'm not making sugar water. I'm going to create some steam for them to cook. Okay. So I've got about a half a cup of water here. And what I'm going to do is add some vanilla flavor to it. Okay. I'm not going to use this whole half a cup. All I'm going to do is go around the edges. I'm just going to put enough in here to create some steam so that the potatoes can cook and the brown sugar can caramelize. See, that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just put a little bit in there that vanilla flavor. Now I'm going to go in with some butter. 
butter. Butter makes everything better, baby. And we're just gonna drop butter. Okay? See that? That's all we're doing. Just drop some butter around because that butter's gonna melt in there. You're gonna know what's in there. You're gonna know. You're gonna know. There we go. I know y'all like, oh, why she got Twitter finger? Because this is how people look at home. Y'all, I'm sorry. I think I'm being triggered. You know what it is? You all will be surprised at how many people act like this is a restaurant or the order and take out. I'm showing you how to cook at home. If you're in a restaurant, no, they should not scoop your butter down with your finger. But if you're at home, you show up, that's how you make it good. Okay? That's all we need for butter. Now, here's what we're going to do next. This is the key. Foil. Okay? Get you some, get you some aluminum foil, as my husband calls it, tin foil. Tin foil. And you want to cover your dish completely. Now, cover it all the way around. Nice and tight. The reason you're covering it nice and tight is you're creating a little area for your steam bath. Okay? This is how that steam that's going to be created by, come on, this is how the steam that will be created. Uh, wait, somebody just said his finger in a restaurant. Don't tell me that. Don't, don't tell me that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> anyway. The foil, make sure it's a nice tight foil pocket, okay? And you're gonna oven on about either 375 or 400, depends on your oven and also how thick your stuff is. And you wanna do it for about 20, maybe 30 minutes, okay? Just like this, keep this on it because that's gonna let that little bit of steam in there get in there, it's gonna help that sugar just do its thing. You're not gonna have no sugar water, okay? I'm not downing somebody else's yam, so don't down mine. I like yours, you're like, well, do you think, okay? But I'm just telling you, Okay, get your little steam pocket, put some jokers in the oven, and you're gonna be good to go. All right, let me put that on these potatoes. Let me see how they're coming along. Y'all thinking, oh, it's too quick. Oh, it's too quick. I don't know that. Hold on, let me get a spoon. Because I they that in front of real big. Ooh. Oh wow. Okay, now look at here. Look at this. You see this? Hold on. Y'all see? That's what we want. This is what we want. This is this, this, this simple. This is what we want. And then take all that. Y'all thought, oh my gosh, you got to cook them potatoes live? We're going to be here all night. I wouldn't do you like that. Too much love. Too much love for y'all. It's too much. I'm going to do that to you. So, I'm going to get these potatoes over here. All right, turn our camera, get our overhead on. Y'all see this? Let me show you again how these potatoes are in case you can see very well in the shot. Best thing to do is use a skewer, but we're cooking at home. That's when you sport. See this? this is what you want. Ooh, this looks good. Hold on. It's hot. I'm being careful. That's what you want. Do you see that? That's what you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get water off of these. So we can start matching. You use the same pot, okay, to match it. Okay. So hold on, I'm gonna put my strainer right here. Pull it on. And I'm just going to pour these here. I'm just gonna get rid of this excess water. I don't need it anymore. Okay. Now, what you can also do sometimes I have done is, you know, you cook a long time, sometimes it's all the water absorbs. I wouldn't advise that on a regular basis. Okay, here we go. Potatoes back into the pot. Beautiful. Look at that. Aren't those pretty? Those are pretty. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Ooh. Okay. Now we're going to almost forgot my mask. Now, this is how I do mine. You do yours like you do yours. You may remember, nobody mad, nobody, nobody talking about nobody over here. Okay? All right, now I like to start with the first with a gentle mash, just like so. This is how I just start to get the potatoes warmed up to realize what's going to happen, okay? Because they've been in a hot sun, you know what I mean, for a while, and they've been chilling and everything. And I'm about to come after with some real aggressiveness, okay? I start with just a little, hey, you know, 
kind of situation. Okay? Now we're going to start adding butter. Now, I like to use Kerrygold butter. Kerrygold butter, okay? This stuff is so good. I use a lot of it in my potatoes because I want them to be good. I'm going to start with about a little over a half of a stick, okay? All right. So, now that I did my first little rough mash, okay? Just did a rough mash. You see how this, now this butter is room temperature, okay? So since it's room temperature, it's gonna really, it's gonna be good up in here. Now I'm gonna start with just a slow, little bit of a slow stir. See that? Just to kind of get this, get it going, okay? Now we're gonna start adding cream. Now, you can use heavy cream, you can use milk, you can use half and half, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna use heavy cream, okay? Now this is also when you start getting to how creamy, how uh, lumpy do you want. For Thanksgiving, I told y'all, I said this time, we have a rule around here, don't get cute on Thanksgiving, but don't like, I don't like it, we don't like it. We're going to play that. Not a Thanksgiving video. Okay. Now, you see how that happens? You see that? Y'all saw how quick that came together? Look. Now, I like mine a little bit softer than this. But you see how, for those of us who like the chunky potatoes, you see how we got a little bit of, you still see some potato pieces in there? If you don't want the chunky potatoes, all you do is a, a potato, a ricer. That'll get it thinner for you. We talked about that. Okay. Melt the butter first. You know what? No, I don't know how to say it anyway. I do melt the butter first sometimes. Sometimes I melt the butter and put it in with, and, and heat the milk together. I've done both. But I actually have discovered that I think I get, y'all are going to laugh at me because this is so crazy. And I admit it. I get some sort of weird satisfaction watching the butter melt. It does something for me. I don't know why. I don't know why. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. But it works for me. Now, if you're going to... Oh, I'm going to switch the spoon. I don't like this spoon. I shouldn't have used this one. I don't like it scraping the hole. Now, if you're going to add cheese, now's a good time to add your cheese. And I'm going to show you all something else I like. Okay, we all love garlic and our potatoes. Instead of roasting actual garlic or anything like that, Better Than Bouillon has this roasted garlic base. Can y'all see that? Am I showing it to you right? Let me try this camera. Oh, whatever. Roasted garlic base, okay? And this is like the best concentrated flavor in the world. And you just put a teaspoon or so of that in there, now, if you have more potatoes, put more, put more in there, okay? And you stir that around in there. Honey, I'm telling you, this is the easiest way to get that garlic flavor you want. Ooh, look at that. Oh, man. You see, that first little rough mash get all we need. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm sorry, y'all. I like it. I like them a little rough, but I like creamy ones. And what, if you notice, I'm adding cream as I go along, okay? I'm not... Dumping it all in and adding it. Add it a little as you go because you don't know what mood the potatoes might be in. You know what I'm saying? You're like, we don't want that. And resist it. And you don't dump all that stuff in there. You don't need that. Oh, look at that. Now, if you want super fluffy and all that, this is when you can get out your hand mixer and use your hand mixer to get them all super fluffy. I'm going to give this a taste though because I feel like I need to. This is when you start seasoning. Remember now, we put a tablespoon of uh, salt in there when we cook them, right? So let's see here. Mm. This is not fair. These jokes are good to go. Oh my God. Y'all. So I'm talking about look. You may, you may tell you what did it. This is not unless this is about salt too. It's the other reason I, I put that tablespoon of salt in there, right? When we started to boil them. When I add this here, this better than bouillon roasted garlic base, 
This is a concentrate, so there's a lot of salt sodium in this. So that gives me the rest of the salt to flavor. Now I've got roasted garlic mashed potatoes, but I have full of garlic. This right here. Okay, side note, these people like me to sponsor me or something because I know I've got a whole bunch of this stuff sold. Better than bouillon. Premium garlic. Premium. <laughs> Roasted garlic base. This is the one right here. These potatoes is creamy with a little bit of lump in them. I don't know if you can see a little bit of lump in them. Let me get a little dish out here. Woo! My God, from good. Let me see here. Look at this. You see that? Now, I got to be careful because my little girl, my mad y'all know she's the necker love her potatoes too. She will come down here and be like, is that dinner? You see this? And you saw we didn't do a whole bunch of potatoes. We did about what was like eight million potatoes, something like that, right? Just a little. We didn't go crazy with it, and we put about a little over half a stick of butter. If I had done that whole five pound bag, trust me, I would have put a lot more butter in there. Look at that. Look at that. And then you take the top and you dab it off with one more piece of butter, just so they know that you love them. Okay. Look at this. What? 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 That's mashed potatoes. Now, I'm listening, y'all. Let me see. So, hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to see what y'all said. Potatoes, butternut, the rough mash, mashed potatoes. Thing. Yes, CJ, do your rough mash and then transfer and finish. I'm just checking all y'all comments to make sure I got everything because YouTube is talking and Facebook is talking. So, everybody talking. I like it. Share the, share the video and talk on. Ooh, Oh my God, I just want to eat more. Okay, I can't. We're going to make some gravy. Now, gravy. Gravy, gravy, gravy. How do we make gravy? How do we make it lump free? All right, here we go. This is what you need for starters a whisk. A whisk. A whisk. All right, we're going to get our heat going. It's not going to take a long time to do this. Yet. We're going to start with some butter. I'm using a whole stick of butter. Now, you will likely, you should use a lot more butter or oil when you do this than I'm using right now, okay? Because I'm just making one pan, okay? Just a little bit to show you. Now, you know how we talk about turkey drippings and all of that stuff? You know, everything? When you cook your Thanksgiving turkey and it comes out and it has that nice little, that stuff dripping on the bottom, that's what you want to put in here. Mix it with a little bit of butter, too. But that... That's the flavor, okay? So what you want to do is equal parts of flour and fat. So now here we've got eight tablespoons of butter because we used the whole stick. Now, we're not going to completely use one-to-one. -one, okay? I'm not going to use eight tablespoons of flour unless you really want thick gravy, okay? But I'm going to show you there's other ways to get that to happen without being so... Um, Aggressive, okay. So, you want to get this butter melted again or your turkey drippings? Well, we almost done. I mean, see what time it was we didn't want to? Oh, we good. We almost done. We almost done. This got to be right. Hey, what's up? What up, bro? Okay, no, this got to be right. This Thanksgiving is coming, and nobody wants lumpy gravy. And I'm telling you, nobody's telling you that your lumpy gravy is lumpy, okay? Or you all know that there's somebody who brings it and you're not telling them, you know, but you're on the side, you're like, well, why did she put that stuff again? We're going to fix that today. All right, so you see how this is melting. We're going to add some flour. Now, I'm going to start with, I did eight tablespoons of butter. So I'm going to do about four-ish generous tablespoons of flour. Well, actually, maybe just three and a half, okay? I'm going to start there. All right, now, you're going to use your whisk to do this right here. And all you're doing is absorbing the flour into the butter or the fat. You see how I'm doing this right here? A whisk is what you want. Okay? I'm going to put just a little bit in there more. You see that? Now, if you want light skin gravy, as soon as you get to this stage, go ahead and add your, your broth. If you want your gravy to have a, a, little, have a little more melanin, Okay, he's cooking it. So you see, it's also going to get darker. 
And the reason I say they keep cooking it like this is, you know, those, those of y'all from New Orleans know, when you're making a gumbo and you start with your roux, you can be almost an hour sometimes trying to get that roux nice and dark. So we're not trying to do all that, but we don't necessarily want light skin gravy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I put my light skin, but I, I like my gravy to have a, I don't know. You know, now that I think about it, turkey gravy just tend to be light skin. Don't they? Turkey gravy is like, I don't know. Sometimes if you look at like turkey gravy versus other ones, sometimes it's a little, it's a little on the yellow side. But we just gonna keep stirring. You want to keep stirring because you don't want this to settle, okay? Keep whisking. This is what's going to keep it smooth. Oh, whoo. It's starting to smell. You should start smelling that butter and flour together. Oh, my God. Oh, this is good. Oh, is it Thanksgiving yet? <laughs> All right, a little more color on it. We're going to get a little more melanin in here, and then we're going to start with the next piece. So what we're going to do next, though, is we're going to start to add in our broth. Now, what you want to do is add uh, chicken broth or turkey broth or, I mean, any kind of, I mean, this is just how you make gravy. You could add any broth. I'm going to add chicken. And, of course, I'm going to be using what? Better than bouillon. You need to sponsor us this way. Better than bouillon, though, also has a turkey, roast turkey base. That's good, too. So, you know, do what you want to do. Ooh, this heat is hot, though. You see how that's getting a little darker? Getting a little melanin on there? <laughs> One just a little, uh, ooh, and now let's get that little nice, um, little toasty smell to it. So keep it moving because you don't want to burn. You don't want that. Okay. All right. No, so, yeah, look at that. You see that melanin coming up? See that? Just keep stirring. Ooh, it smells so good, too. And and watch it, right? Don't get fancy and step away. Don't do that, okay? Because you you will mess up some gravy trying to just go real quick. No. I know how it is, how you got your phone and you want to show your Instagram and stuff. Because I didn't want to do the same stuff. I ain't gonna lie, I don't want to do the same thing. But when you make it ready, you need to stay put and have somebody else do your Instagram for you. Okay? All right, y'all. Is this brown enough? Just enough melanin? Just enough melanin in here? Okay. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna start with adding water. I'm gonna turn it into broth. Slowly add it. So the temperature can adjust. See there? There we go. All right. It's almost going to look like you're deglazing your pan, but you're not. <laughs> okay? But you're not. Now we're going to go out with this broth. We grab another spoon. Now I'm going to tell you all the truth. What I have done before, I have used that uh, roasted garlic base in my gravy. It made like a garlic gravy. Child, don't knock it till you try it. Okay. Keep going nice and good. See that? And then we're gonna add chicken broth or turkey or you want if you just have the can of broth or the carton, just pour that in. Okay, that's fine. I like doing it this way because I believe I have found that there's a lot more flavor in this concentrate than anything else I could do. And then all you look to do is whisk. And as this starts to boil, it's going to thicken. Okay. This is it. Look, is there a lump in the gravy? Do you see a lump? Exactly. See, it's not hard. You can do it too. Keep whisking. Don't get fancy and be like, oh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go to the Don't do that. Oh, I'm gonna go trade. Don't do that. Sit down somewhere. Just sit down somewhere and let your gravy finish. And you be nice to it so that you don't taste something. If you walk away from gravy like you all big and bad. Gravy will be like, oh, 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 that's, oh, really? Okay, that's how we're doing this? That's what we're doing? And that gravy will show you up, baby, in front of everybody. How you looking like you don't know what you're doing. Now, take a peek, y'all. We get a little bowl. I did not start away from my gravy. Look, I'm right here with my gravy. Turn the heat down. You see how it's thickening up as it's well? See that? And you see that color? It's still kind of light skin. And look, caramel on it. If you want it to be a little more melanin, all you got to do is cook it a little longer with the flour. And the butter before you uh, add the broth. Now look, you see that consistency? That's gravy with no lumps in it. Now, if you want your gravy thicker, okay, look at that. Oh, isn't it pretty? Ooh, that's a 
gravy. Now, we love thick gravy around here. This is how we do it. And then you want to make sure you get a taste. Okay? Now, you do what you like. Did you close it? Oh, the cabinet. I was supposed to me up. He said, oh, Kevin, I just sit here and just cooking and ain't looking at nothing. All right, turn the sheet off. Thank you, babe. Now, when you taste your gravy, oh, this, this is pretty. I just want to sit here and rub it. <laughs> turn the heat off, though, because if you keep cooking, it'll just keep getting thicker and you have taste. And you have a hard time explaining that. Let it turn the heat off. If you want your gravy to be thicker, say you do it and you're like, oh, it's too thick, I put too much water. Take your water about a quarter cup or so and add another tablespoon of flour bring it up to a boil and slowly add it in and it'll get thicker okay that's how you thicken your gravy if you follow these steps and your gravy somehow still has lumps in it that's okay here's what you do get you a strainer pour your gravy through it okay clean your pot out and put it back in there and you stand up there and you stir like you ain't never seen on one okay now let's give this a little taste Metal spoon, you can burn your mouth. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I'm holiday ready. Everything is coming out right today. I don't. Oh, that's good. I'm going to tell you what did it. It's this right here. Better than bouillon. That did it. So if you say, oh, you know what? This is too thick for my family. We don't like our gravy that thick. Add you another drop of water in there. And taste it. If your flavor has become too diluted, add another little drop of that broth in there, okay? Now, pepper, you want a pepper sprinkle? Who's that? So that some pepper? Okay, y'all. Let me give y'all some pepper. Y'all want they want some pepper. Here you go. Mm. Mm. Y'all want some pepper? Y'all want some pepper? Here you go. And then, okay, now, you don't get pepper. Get the good kind. Get you some fresh crap in there. Is that better, my babies? Is that better, my babies? <laughs> All right, now I'm going to serve this. I'm going to get my potatoes. Look at this. Look, look, look. Look. <laughs> you get a little bit of mashed potato right here. Okay. Just like this. Just a little bit. Like what, what the preachers say in uh, soul food. Just a little bit. Just keep what you need. Y'all <laughs> remember that? Y'all remember that. Play it like it's a meat. Get what you need. Just get what you need. Just get what you need. I ate on all my food, but I have to keep getting more of them. You know, a little gravy. And put that little thing in there when you put it in. Okay. Just like that. Like that. Just like that. This is a fork I used earlier. It's got butter on it. Oh my God, y'all. I need a good biscuit. Baby, a biscuit right now. But now, if we did a biscuit with the sausage gravy, let me show you how to do that another time. I need a little bit more. I need to go one more yam. Ooh. Don't worry, I'm going to show you my yams too. Hold on. Yeah, you get that little stir. Uh, this don't make sense. This don't make no sense. She said, What? Honey, if you're here right now, this will. I ain't got words for what's going on right now. This is good. Mm. Oh, that. All right. Oh, my God. I got to stop talking because I'm going to lose my cook. This is seriously, seriously good. But I'm going to show y'all real quick these candy yams. You know, my husband came out here like he was helping me. He just quietly slid the bowl and eat. Ain't that something? That's good. That's what I want to do. That's why I cook like this. I do it for my husband. And another tip, while your gravy is sitting, it will thicken up a little bit on you. It will, that's what it does. Just pour your little tablespoon or so of water, loosen it up, and keep going. Don't go crazy and start you know, dumping in quarter cups and stuff away. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, last thing, and we're going to be, I'm going to get out of your way tonight. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Thank y'all for being patient. But I want y'all. I, I'm gonna want y'all to. I want y'all to really have a good holiday. You know what I'm saying? So of course I made some yams earlier today, or sweet potatoes, whatever you want to call it. And I did exactly what I told y'all. Look, that's what had happened. 
Now, another little bowl. Oh, another little bowl here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Now, I want y'all to see something. You see that smoke? You see this? This is the sugar water. This is a nice syrup, you got. And it's layered. Oh, you see that? You see that? Look at that. Woo! And that little bit of vanilla in there and the butter. Okay. Now I want y'all to see that. This is, oh, did I show you right? Y'all know I don't. Is that right? That's that cinnamon and nutmeg. Two different things because they're different things. Watch this. You see how that happened? My potato didn't fall apart. The sweet potato didn't all of a sudden just go, oh, my God, it's not, it's not, a, those are the mashed potatoes. These are the sweet. Mm. Ain't nobody supposed to do what I just did. Lord have mercy. Listen, I hope we make it to Thanksgiving around here, y'all, because this right here, I don't know, I don't impress myself. Woo! Okay, make them on the stove top, make them in the oven. Do you, boo, but make sure they're good. Good Lord. All right, y'all, we did it. I ain't gonna lie, I was a little worried tonight because we were doing, being a little aggressive. We were a little aggressive tonight making some dishes. We were doing mashed potatoes and gravy and sweet potatoes, but I felt like y'all need to know, okay? And I wanted to show you, and I, I'm just gonna eat. I told y'all I love potato. This gravy is, so I, I never lose words, but sometimes when the food is good, words escape. This will be one of those times. All right, family. I want y'all to have a blessed evening. I will see you next Monday. Okay? Next Monday is our last live before Thanksgiving. You still have time to order your cookbook. I have extended my special. If you go to my website, chefglories.com, use the promo code Dallas. Yes, Dallas. You will get a discount. So do so, the candy yam. I don't know if the yam recipe is in here. Whole bunch of good stuff that'll make you look good as if you can. Okay? So order your cookbook. Next Monday, our last one before these just and I are going to swap the plate around <laughs> before Thanksgiving. Send me messages of what you would like for me to show you. I tried to hit the basics, the mac and cheese, the pie, and the mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. I tried to hit all that now. But next Monday, let me know whatever questions you guys have and what's the meat. Oh, girl, we be having the meat show up in here. What, you brought meat for Thanksgiving? Oh, we're going to have turkey and ham and beef and stuff. <laughs> but any questions you guys have, let me know so I can make sure that next week I'm geared towards your, answering your questions that you have of anything specific for Thanksgiving. Um, and if y'all don't ask me nothing, I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to make it. I'm probably doing it anyway. But let me know what you want to know. I will see you then. I love y'all dearly. I've had the time of my life again. Share this with a friend. Tell somebody. And if you're catching this on the rebroadcast, thank you for sticking around to the end. I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place for Alabama Live. It's just glorious. That's me. Happy cooking.